So I'm going to really work on this corner right here because it seems to be the worst part in the test plot. This section right here, you see the blue haze right here? All right, so today's Tuesday, the 21st of May. It's 7.01 p.m. I'm getting ready to go get in the van and go out to eat uh, dinner with my, well, supper, excuse me. We call it supper around here. And I'm gonna go eat supper with my wife and kids. And we'll be about two hours. And so it's, this is gonna run from about seven to nine. I won't go to bed to about, I don't know, 10, 10 30 or so and I'll cut this off right before I go to bed. I'll come back out tomorrow evening and we'll finish the video up. So now that's the jumbo sled. That's the bigger sled unit than the, uh, the new ones they've come out with. And I've got it set up on a, like a quarter rotation. It's going over to the edge of the garden, spinning around to this grass line and back. Now what I've done, I've set me up four cups. One, two, three and four all the way out here to the end this thing's gonna run for about three and a half hours and then I'm gonna be able to come out here and take a measurement on the cups and we will see how much water uh, I'm getting uh oh that might mess me up right there this other one it's kind of catching. I need to move this one over just a pinch. Oh, here it comes. Like this. Man, I'm telling you, thank God for uh, giving me this well. Man, this thing really pumps the water out big time. So I'm just sliding these cups over just a little bit so my other one, I've got two running at one time, two of those jumbo heads at one time, the other one's over there. And that one's actually thrown far enough to overlap so it won't touch it now. So these four I'll collect off this one head and we'll see how much water we get uh, from seven o'clock to 10.30. All right, so we're 11 o'clock. It's been running since, uh, what did I say, seven o'clock, seven to eight, 19, 11, that's three, four hours. And you see it's still pumping pretty hard right there. Um, let me go, ooh, we got some nice water in there. Oh, heck yeah. Let me go out here and cut the light on to the building and I'll bring the cups in and we'll measure them and see what we got. Look at the size of those freaking things. That higher bricks is the freaking bomb. Look how healthy that leaf is. Look at there. Already, she's coming on. She's coming on out. All right, so this is pretty interesting. This was the closest cup to me, all the way down to the furthest cup away from me. Now, I know you're wondering, why is that water a different color? Well, there's nothing different about the water. It's these measuring cups I've used for a very long time, and they're kind of stained. Uh, I mean, they're clean and washed out. The plastic is just kind of stained, so it gives it a little bit of a tint. But let's see the closest one to me. I got two inches of water. It's right at two inches. The next one out is just a pinch over two inches. The third one out, I got an inch. And the fourth one out, I got an inch. So that's pretty interesting. And of course, anybody that does irrigation, 
I think you're pretty uh, aware that the closer you get back to the irrigation head, typically the more water it's going to put out because of some of the mist and that kind of thing and the droplets kind of get heavy as they get toward the end. So, you know, we could average that out to about an inch and a half and just call it that. And uh, so it took me four hours uh, running it at a what's that 45 is that a 45 degree uh let's see 180 90 that'd be a 90 degree angle it was like that uh so i think it's a 90 i'm a little sleepy uh 90 degree angle and we got about an inch and a half so uh, if i were to run it at full 180 you know all the way back around i'd actually have to run that thing for eight hours to get that one uh, inch and a half of water and of course i have two heads running at one time so i'm covering quite a bit of area doing it that way um so i'll be back tomorrow uh, after work we'll finish this video up hey there it's pete with gci turf hope you're having a great day and i'm thirsty because it's hot Well, didn't too much of it come out. I can still drink it. Now check this out. We are hot and dry, okay? I don't know about what you are in, in your neck of the woods, but here in Central North Carolina, man, we have been high 80s, low 90s, going into a time period where we're gonna be mid 90s and there's no sign of rain in sight. All this talk about water reminds me when Jesus said that he gives living water. Of course, he's not talking about the water that you drink when you get hot and thirsty. He's talking about the water for here. And, and basically, he's saying that he has uh, what is needed to quench any thirst you might have in your, in your soul and in your, uh, your life, you know, your troubles, your problems. Doesn't matter if your marriage is on the rocks, if you got a bad relationship with your kids, if, if it doesn't matter. Bad finances and you have financial issues, it doesn't matter. Jesus is the living water that can quench all of that. So, hey, I've been living it for over 20 years now, and God has quenched that thirst that I had in here. And I just, I don't get thirsty anymore, and I'm not ever going to be thirsty. All right, so even though Jesus will quench that thirst inside you, check this out. Uh, my yard still needs some water. It's still thirsty. Now, I can look out through here, and I can see that one little spot. Now, this is the following day. You just saw the night before, and it was running up until, I can't remember what time it was, 11 o'clock or so, 10.30. And you can still see I got a little bit of heat stress right in there. And it might be a little bit right in here. So it's just a little bit left. If you remember, this, this area right here that was stressed out real bad, that's gone. Okay? Um, I think I've cured that for the time being. Now you see that bad spot right there? That's a little too far gone. I don't think that spot right there is going to recover. I just really don't think it now. Now let me give you a little history right here. This is a heavily used area right here. Okay, it's a lot of travel coming from the building. It's travel going into the garden, equipment, Ventrac, you know, you name it, mower, all kind of things. This area is just a little more compacted as well than say out there in the, in the middle. Why? I have no idea. It just is. It just always tends to stress out before anything else back here does. So what's going to be my fix for this? Well, I'm going to continue to pound this evening after evening after evening until I get this healed up 100% and back on track and hopefully 
we'll get some rain at some point in time in the near future. Now let me show you a little bit of a difference right here, okay? You can see the line right there. That's the renovation. That turf grass isn't even a year old yet. Okay, we, we done that renovation last September. It's not even a year old. This turf grass right here is about four and a half years old, if my math is right. I didn't renovate this back area, the test plot area, until a couple of years after I did my yard. Uh, so this isn't quite as old as that, but it's about four, four and a half years old. It is considerably more healthy, dense, lush, thick, whatever you want to call it, matured. Uh, so it's weathered some summers and fought through some storms. It's had plenty of natural adjuvant on it. It's had plenty of humic acid, uh, plenty of biostimulant products. So it's it can withstand the heat and the pressure a lot better than this can. And you can see out here, man, this is starting to stress out. Now, I still haven't mowed it. I'm not going to mow it. You can see the areas right here. Look at them. And then when you kind of look out through there, you can see a, a bluish tint. You can't see it quite as good now because the sun's not hitting it. But they're out there. All the blue tint out there, gray, it's kind of changing color. It needs some water. I can't water it. It's just too big of an area. So I'm going to manage this by not mowing it to death. Uh, matter of fact, I haven't mowed it in, uh, it's been at least 10 days since I cut it. At least, if not more than that. And it's probably going to be another 10 days before I don't mow it. So, you know, that's a good trick. If you're just not going to water, stay the heck off of it with a mower. This area is on a pretty good preventative fungicide plan, okay? And you're going you're gonna to hear different thoughts and different opinions on when to water. Obviously, if you're in a perfect situation, water early morning, heavily or deeply and infrequently, meaning my yard with the irrigation system over here, this grass gets watered two, sometimes three days a week. That's about it. I run the zones for about 40 minutes a zone, 45 minutes a zone each time I water. So it gets a good heavy soaking two to three times a week and that seems to be doing the trick i won't adjust that unless i see the yard start showing heat stress then i'll make an adjustment in my minutes i you typically don't increase the days of watering i increase the minutes so that i get a little bit deeper soak each time i water so this would be considered my perfect situation i have a nice timer on my irrigation a control box thing over there. I have an app on my phone to where I can set the timer uh, from sitting in the living room. Well, I can go over there and set it. I can set it to run as I want to. I don't have to manually do anything. It just happens. So that's my, this is my perfect situation area. Over here, I could make this a perfect situation area if I chose to, but I'm choosing not to just to show you and to make the point. This is my work all day, three kids, run a business, run an online business, make YouTube video situation. That's what this is, okay? Meaning, I don't have extra time to come out here and set things up in the morning, turn it off, let it run for two hours and cut it off. Yes, I could put timers on it. I understand that 100%. But this is my real life scenario that I'm making it as difficult as I can on myself to do this simply to make a point. Now here's my point. Ever since we've gotten hot and dry, I've been watering this in the evenings. I started over in that corner, moved to this corner, come right down the middle with the heads and now I'm over here on this side so I've been doing this for about 10 days and it's been late in the evenings on up into 10 30 11 o'clock at night we've been extremely humid perfect situation for disease water left on the turf overnight hot and humid weather muggy perfect situation 
Not to mention we're dealing with tall fescue, which loves disease, or disease loves it. But this is on a very strong preventative fungicide program. So in my mind, I'm thinking I have the prevention, I have the product inside the plant, in the root zone, in the plant, fighting for me that's what's allowing me to water these late evenings uh well how do i know that's true well i mean i've been doing it for 10 days in prime premium conditions for fungus and i see absolutely zero brown patch zero gray leaf spot none of that here i have yet a little bit more proof that this isn't a terrible thing if I want to stress if you're not in a premium situation, meaning like my yard over there, it's premium. I don't have to take any chances. I can do it all by the book. So now you've seen a premium situation with uh, just everything I can do it as I want to do it perfectly by the book. And you've seen a non-premium situation, meaning this probably fits a lot of people. I mean, a lot of folks want a nice yard. They want to water. But, man, they get up and go to work at 530 in the morning. They can't come out here and set all this crap up and go through the trouble. And It's just every situation isn't perfect. So that's why I have this back here to show you. Now, another reason I'm really comfortable doing this is because I've been doing it for years. I can't tell you how long I've been watering this area of grass back here in the evening yes when 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 my circumstances allow me to water at the premium time obviously i watered at the premium time because i want to take as little chance as i can but my time isn't premium all the time that's a lot of times right so that's why i'm getting away with this my fungicide is down i'm confident that 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 mixture of fungicide is doing its job protecting my turf from disease even though i'm kind of setting the stage for a premium time for the for the yard to get fungus in it now back to my premium situation here something else i will do and i will do this almost on a daily basis depending on just how hot it gets is i will do what's called syringing for those of you that play golf i know you've been out on your golf course and you've been playing golf and here comes the golf cart and the guy takes a water hose off, hooks it up to a water spigot under the ground, walks the green and sprays the green with just water. That's called syringing. What that's doing is that water droplet is falling on the grass blade, absorbing the heat off of the turf, evaporating up into the atmosphere. So really that's no different than if I was smoking hot after a long day's work and I take that water and pour it over the top of my head, all it's doing is cooling me down. Now when I do syringe, I'll do it around four or five o'clock because remember, I'm in a premium situation here. I want to run those zones four, five, six minutes a zone enough to get the grass blade coated so that that, that, trans, that transfer of heat can take place and evaporate up into the atmosphere but at the same time, I want the grass blades dry without water on them before nightfall. So hey, I hope that helps. I hope that's a little bit of insight on kind of my view on watering. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to get uh, some weird comments on that. And, and you got to understand, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt the correct way to water early morning deep and infrequent a little bit of syringing that's premium prime situations back there i'm kind of making myself not have a premium situation just so i can show you how to do it and to be honest with you i mean i got three kids a wife a business and all that stuff going on i don't always have a premium situation okay so i do have to water that late in the evenings and it's been doing it's been doing fine for me for years now, at least four, because that's how long I've been doing it back there. So, hey, hope that helped. And look, don't forget, I've got those cool season lawn care guides and 
it's basically a full tilt fertilization program tells you step by step what to do inside that it has a really detailed fungicide program that if you're dealing with disease it'll help you so hey thank you for watching like subscribe tell all your buddies i'll check you later